there are two things every Electra owner I know loves to do with their bicycles. One is ride them. Two is upgrade them. I'd like to walk you through the process of the best upgrade I've made so far to my Electra Townie. The system I'll be installing is the Bafang Mid-Drive Electric Motor. It comes as a kit. Everything you need except the battery is included. This one is a 750 watt version of it. There's different power levels that you can choose from. The battery I have here is a 20,000 milliamp hour or 20 milliamp hour battery that I picked up off eBay. I'll put a link to both of these in the description so that you can see and do research for yourself as to which one would be best for you. We'll have to start the process by removing the crank set and bottom bracket from your bicycle. It's not a hard job. It should not be intimidating to you, but there are a few specialized tools that will make it a lot easier. One of the things you see here is a crank removal tool. Now this is one that I've had for a long time. It came in a kit that I bought. The kit wasn't very expensive. You can find them on Amazon or eBay or your local bike shop. The chrome plated piece you see here is a bottom bracket removal tool. Also inexpensive purchase that can be picked up on Amazon, eBay, or at your local bike shop. I'm not going to walk you through the process here because there are a lot of really good how-to videos on YouTube. So we'll start with the bottom bracket and crank set already removed and pick up there. Once the crank set and bottom bracket have been removed, we'll work from the non-drive side of the bicycle. That's going to be the left-hand side if you're seated on it. We'll take the Bafang mid-drive electric motor assembly and slide it through from the back to the front of the bottom bracket housing. Now once you've slid this through, it should go in fairly easily depending on how much paint you have inside your bottom bracket housing. And once it's slid through, you can see that there is enough thread to go ahead and make a good secure connection. Now the first thing we'll be assembling here is going to be this keeper this collar. You're going to notice in this collar there is two sides to it. One has uh, places where it sticks out. That should go toward the bottom bracket housing because that kind of needs to bite up against the housing there. And one has the divots that are, that are in and that comes out toward you. Place that in and go ahead and insert the bolts that come with it, but don't tighten them all the way down just yet. The next piece we'll have is going to be this lock ring that will hold the motor in place. There is a specialized tool to put this on. I've broken mine, so when I install it, I'm going to use a, uh, a screwdriver and a hammer. I, folks may just cringe at me using that, I understand, but it's what I have, and so it's what I'm going to use to make sure this is good and snug and that this motor this motor stays up where it's supposed to be, should have contact uh, as far forward and up as it can, and, and it should hold there based on how tight I, I put this ring on. The torque specs are included in the kit, in the paperwork that comes with your kit, so you'll be able to find that, and, and if you have a torque wrench, be able to use your torque wrench to tighten it down as you want to. Once we have that ring snug down, We'll go ahead and put this keeper on the outside. Now it does have its torque specs written on the piece. It's 25 to 30 nanometers, newton meters, whatever that NM stands for. There's another specialized tool that's used here. It's one of the ones I showed you earlier, and that makes it a lot easier to get a good grip on that collar and tighten it down where it's supposed to be. If you don't have that, of course, you can use some wide mouth pliers, but it's going to mar up the finish of, of this little collar when you do that. Now we're back to the point of reinstalling our crank arms. Slide them onto the bottom bracket. It's a simple matter of just reinstalling this bolt that came out. There are torque specs. You probably should try to find those and, and put those on according to torque if you have a torque wrench. Otherwise, you need to make sure that you just snug them down really good and tight as you see me doing here and recheck them after you've ridden for a little while. 
you'll see we've switched over to the drive side. And we now we need to mount the chain ring on the mid drive motor. This chain ring is secured by five bolts. Now I've replaced the five bolts that came with it with something that has a lock ring on it, a lock washer on it. I, I like the added security of having a lock washer there. So we'll put those five on and snug them down real good before we put the drive side crank arm back on as well. The next thing we'll do is reinstall the chain. Now you notice my chain is attached to I don't have a derailleur in the rear of my bicycle. I've replaced my rear hub with a three-speed internally geared hub. I don't necessarily recommend that because it's a little bit weaker than a traditional sprock, uh, traditional rear that comes on the townie. Probably need to clean my chain if I were gauging from the grease that came off on my hands. And now we can go ahead and reinstall the drive side crank arm. Again, be sure you get it good and snug and then recheck it after you've ridden it for just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall my chain guard and this part of the assembly will be finished. We're now at the point of reinstalling our battery and making some electrical connections. Now this battery bag, I'll also link to in the description, it's the best fitting best looking as far as I'm concerned battery bag I've been able to find to fit in this townie frame now you have a lot of options because there's a lot of space here but this bag holds its shape well it holds this battery well it get, leaves me enough space in front of the battery to put an extra tube to put my tool kit and have plenty of space that I'm not worried about things getting uh, too tight in there now it goes over the top tube and it is held on by velcro in three places there at the top and then it is held on by two at the down tube so that it doesn't swing and it stays very stable I, I like having the bulk of my weight here in the middle of my bicycle when you do a rear hub motor you're putting a lot of weight at the very back of the bicycle when you mount your battery on the rear rack again you're putting a lot of weight on the back of the bicycle but when you have everything here in the tr what they call the triangle uh, your hub motor is down here by the bottom bracket. Your battery is here inside the triangle. You've got everything pretty well centered between the wheels, and it makes for a very stable ride. I've replaced the battery connector with my favorite, the XT90 Anti-Spark battery connector. You can find them on Amazon or eBay. You might can find them in your local hobby shop. I like them because of the anti-spark feature. I also like them because they'll handle a lot of voltage or wattage or whatever that is that goes through them. And it was just a simple matter of soldering on a new end to both sides of this connection. In this set of wires that comes out of the in the set of wires that comes out of the motor, you're going to find a couple of small ones that have bladed connections. That is the connection to the headlight. You'll find another that runs to the main computer connection. I've run it up here by the down tube. There's still another that runs to the speed sensor that gets mounted, mounted here on the rear next to the wheel. And then a couple of others. One is a gear sensor that allows the motor to cut power in case you've shifted it recognizes the movement in the shift cable and when it does it cuts power to the motor and the other is a pair of brake sensors so that whenever you pull on your brake levers that are included with the kit you cut power to the motor as well we'll tidy things up with a few zip ties to keep wires from drooping and getting in the way and then this part of the installation will also be done I'll take this opportunity to show you the computer that comes in this kit. Press and hold on the bottom right hand button and you'll see a greeting, hello, as the computer comes on. This will show you several things on this screen. You'll see that it has a meter on the left hand side that tells you how much power you're using, a meter on the right hand side that's going to show you how much battery you have left. Of course there's a speedometer here in the middle, it's going to have a trip meter and an odometer. 
it is a fully featured small computer. I like the size of it because I don't like because I don't like an electric bicycle to have a huge computer that makes it look like an electric bicycle. If you press and hold the plus, there are presets that allow you to choose how much power is going through the system. I believe by the factory there are five presets, one through five, and you can change that by pressing the plus and the minus here on the left-hand side. I've reprogrammed mine to have nine presets, and all that does is just give me a little more configurability in how I ride my bicycle. When you press and hold the plus sign on the left-hand side of the computer, the headlight will come on. I'll test and make sure that works. We've plugged it in correctly. If you've plugged yours in and it doesn't work, just switch the polarity from on the blades that come out of the motor there underneath. One of the features included in this year model of the townie is internal cable routing. I've taken advantage of that and run some of the electrical cables in with some of the factory cables where the brake lever runs into the top tube, I have added both the speedometer cable as well as the throttle cable through the top tube and then out uh, there at the back that you can see where it comes out just above the battery bag. For the down tube, I have run my light cable in there in addition to the gear shift cable. It comes out just above the bottom bracket and then runs along the bottom there towards the battery. So that's been a much cleaner look on my wife's town. It doesn't have internal cable routing, so I ran those just along the tube and used a few more zip ties. I used a, a loom around the cables at the in front of the handlebars to keep everything kind of a clean look there. And some of these connectors are fairly large. Uh, whenever you get the kit, you'll see that the connectors are similar to the the one there that connects the main set of electronics uh, from the motor to the main set of electronics from the from the computer, from the speedometer. Uh, that's a pretty good size connector there. And, and the rest of them, the connectors are significantly larger than the wires they're connecting. And so there's a little bit of a, of a, a bundle there um, in front of my wife's handlebar where I've had to use a loom to connect everything. But using the loom and, and making sure that my cables don't just hang, it gives a pretty clean look. I know that some of you may have have made the purchase of a townie and it was quite, a, quite an investment and you didn't go with the townie go. You looked at both of them and you thought I just can't justify the extra cost of the electric townie. So you bought the regular townie and now you're a couple of years in and you thoroughly enjoyed your investment. It's been well worth the money and you've saved up a few more dollars and you're thinking, okay, so now do I wanna add electricity to what I have been enjoying so much? I mean, this bicycle has stolen my heart. I have taken it on rides on vacation. I have ridden it around the neighborhood with my kids. I've even named it. Yes, I'm looking at you. And you wanna hang on to this bicycle that's brought you so much joy? Well, here's a great way to save your knees, to get more distance out of what you enjoy by adding a Bafang 750 watt mid-drive motor to the bicycle you already love.